Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to an interesting video regarding aircraft communications by the use of the famous ACAS system. We'll look into it, what it is, how it works and great features that come with ACAS. Be ready to receive some messages to your brain and let's get started. American 133 is a new airplane, 31 left Kilo Echo, taxi left Bravo. In the early days of aviation and until today, pilots communicate with air traffic control either via VHF to transmit their requests and receive their clearances or ask for local weather information. And if you are out of VHF reach, for example, when you know crossing longer remote distances such as over the Atlantic, position reports and other requests are made via HF transmissions or CPDLC, but more on that on another video. But besides the regular position reports, etc., flight crews also had to inform their airline headquarters about the phase of flight they were in, such as off block, takeoff, landing, and on block times. Now, this was crucial to the employee and employer as flight crews were paid by their actual working hour. Now, this meant added workload for the flight crews, which got quite fed up with these reporting times. And so did the employer due to the inaccuracies and pilots calling in their block times just after reaching their hotel room, all just to extend their flight time and get more paid. <laughs> so in an effort to reduce the crew workload but improve data integrity, the engineering department of American-based company A-Rink introduced the A-CAS system in July 1978. Now initially, as an automated time clock system, similar to a punch card system. And the first airline to launch the system was Piedmont Airlines in the USA. So what does actually ACAS mean or stand for? It's Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System and refers to the complete air and ground systems consisting of the equipment on board, the equipment on ground, and a service provider forwarding your message to the right receiver. Okay, let's first have a look at the onboard equipment. Now, the system is very much the same on either a Boeing, an Airbus, or any other airplane manufacturer, but I'll be showing you how to use it on a Boeing 747. So as an example, let's say we want to request the latest ATIS weather report from Riyadh International Airport in Saudi Arabia. Now you use the center CDU, go into the ACAS menu, select the weather report type, punch in the four letter code of Riyadh Airport, which is Oscar Echo Romeo Kilo, and then you press send. Now by doing so, the ACAS management unit then encodes the message to a router and then transmits it either via VHF left, center, or right. Now it sends a little data package known as the downlink via the very high frequency band to the nearest VHF ground antenna. And from there it gets broadcasted to a ground station which decodes and processes your request. The ground station, which is a DSP, a data link service provider, either the company A Rink or CETA, will then process your request, get the ATIS weather report from Rehat, and then sends it as an uplink back to your aircraft. Now, if VHF is unavailable, which is likely over the Atlantic and other remote regions, it automatically switches to use SATCOM. And as you can see here, so I've tried VHF first, and once no connection was established, it tries once more via SATCOM automatically. Now the use of satellite communication is yet again possible due to a service provider such as Inmarsat or Iridium, now which sends the message again to one of the ACAS data link providers which will then process your request. And if both should be unavailable, for instance, when flying in high polar regions, 
HF left and right would be the last option to transmit and receive your ACAST message. But in our example, VHF worked just fine and just check how fast the request is sent down to Earth and back up to your plane. Roughly five seconds. It's definitely a faster response rate than any WhatsApp message by your girlfriend. I can promise you that. <laughs> So basically speaking, think of the ACAS onboard equipment as a box that's capable of converting a predefined or manually written text message into a digital format that's able to be then transmitted via VHF. And this is what it sounds like when an ACAS message is transmitted via the VHF band. You see, there's not much to it. It only takes a split second to transmit and receive. Now, requesting weather is one of many things you can use the ACAS for. Now, a very fine feature of ACAS is that your airline operator can send you your entire flight plan, which you can then load directly into your FMC, including en route and descend winds, making your descent and fuel planning very accurate. Even in air, your airline dispatcher can send you updated wind forecasts which may be favorable for your flight time and fuel saving. Also, a fantastic feature to reduce crew workload is to use the ACAS for clearances. For example, when requesting an oceanic clearance, which I'll quickly demonstrate in this video. You can also request so-called PDCs, pre-departure clearances, via ACARS, which are becoming more and more popular in the United States. So you request your clearance via the PDC template, ACARS then transmits the message to the data link service provider via VHF, which is then being relayed to the ATC tower. Tower approves your clearance, but can also make changes to your routing, sends the changed routing and clearance back to the DSP, and then the DSP relays it to your aircraft. I know it sounds arduous, but it takes only a few seconds. Now, the mention techniques all require the input by either the pilot, the air traffic controller, or the airline operator, aka dispatch. But ACAS is much more than just a long distance messaging service. A lot of the ACAS messages are sent automatically, for instance, the O O O I, <laughs> the out of the gate, off the ground, on the ground, and into the gate times. Now these O O O I events are detected by using inputs from the aircraft sensors mounted on doors, the parking brake, and the landing gear struts. Now at the start of each flight phase, an ACAS message is then automatically generated and transmitted to your airline operator, describing the flight phase, the time at which it occurred, and other related information such as the amount of fuel on board or the flight origin and destination. Now, quick question regarding this picture here. Was our plane pushed back out of the gate or was it a gate position where no pushback was required? Comment below if you know the answer. <laughs> so these messages are used to track the status of the aircraft and crews, but do not mistake this for the ATC transponder. That's a whole other system. And this is not the only monitoring function which is transmitted via ACAS. Various other systems are censored, for example, such as the FADEC, the Full Authority Engine Control Unit, transmitting engine parameters such as the oil quantity, fuel flow, engine vibrations, engine abnormalities directly to maintenance office in real time. And it's an airline's operator's own decision how much equipment shall be censored, monitored and transmitted to dispatch. Now the ACAS unit of the Airbus A320 of Egypt Air Flight 804 sent an ACAS message indicating the presence of smoke in the forward toilet and the avionics bay before the aircraft crashed into the Mediterranean Sea in May 2016. And speaking of airplane accidents, you may now ask, wouldn't the ACAS system of the Boeing 777 help 
finding vanished Malaysian Flight 370? Sure, it would have. But guess which crucial system was turned off in mid-flight? You have the air-to-air -air messaging option where you can communicate with your colleagues, for instance, asking them to speed up a bit <laughs> if they are blocking your flight level, or you can ask dispatch for the last football score of your favorite football team. ACARS has developed itself into one of the leading messaging and monitoring services within the airline industry. From being a modern punch card system for flight crews, sending out only four messages per flight, it has grown into a worldwide and very reliable commodity that transmits more than 9 billion messages every year or 25 million messages per day. Not as many as WhatsApp, but definitely more important ones. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Please let me know in the comment section below which other topics you would like me to cover in upcoming videos. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel. Check. Activate the notification bell. Check. Follow my Instagram account. Check. And visit my website for more information. Check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing all the best, your Captain Joe.